Hi, everyone. Let's talk about what's working now to get your first or next client. I know that there are a lot of you who are asking yourself, what do I do to get the clients that I want? Whether I am just looking for my very first client, whether I am a little bit further along, I've had clients before, I'm looking for more, whether I am looking to book out my business with clients and customers, what is actually working right now to get clients? What are the simple keys to a consistently booked business? I know that some of you have shared with me that you feel like you're really having to push yourself to go out and get clients, that you're finding yourself hiding out out of self-doubt or discouragement or a fear of failure, or a fear of being found out. You're asking yourself, what am I doing wrong? If only I had a clearer, uh, a clearer plan, that would feel better. But here's what I want to tell you. There are a few very simple keys, and we're going to cover them today, to building that consistently booked out business. These are the same keys that have helped me to generate multiple six figures in life with passion over the past three years. And here's what they don't involve. They don't involve starting with this small or non-existent audience and building and launching a course from scratch and expecting that people will come. They don't involve creating a bunch of, um, creating some complicated funnel that makes you all the money that you want while you sleep. They don't involve pushing yourself to contact 30 people a day using someone's prescribed script. They don't involve any of the strategies you've heard about and felt gross or icky or uncomfortable about, but try to talk yourself into it anyway because someone said that they got amazing results with them, the kind of results that you want. What I want to help you do today is develop a simple, clear plan. You know that's my jam. That's designed around your personality, passions, and preferences so that you can get clearer on your next step and take it with simplification. This is not about jumping from idea to idea. This is not about constantly questioning yourself every day and having no idea what's going to work or not. This is about you getting clear on exactly where you need to hone in to get your first or next client and take that step with ease and excitement. And if you're working a nine to five, you can take this right now and take it into the weekend and do ya thing. Can I get an amen? Hi everyone, great to see you. So glad that you're here. All right, my friends, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this as simple as possible because simplification is my superpower. You ready? There are two things you need to Serve your people well. There are two things that you need in order to get clients. And from this overarching two things, we're going to break it down into, um, into some specific action steps that you can take. Steph Crowda in the house. Hey, hey. All right, two things that you need, my friends. Two things that you need. You need number one. You get your stuff written down. Number one, you need clarity on who you want to serve and how. Clarity on who you want to serve and how. If you do not have that down, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Even though Monopoly gives me a lot of anxiety and I like it at the beginning in the, what does this say about my personality? I like it in the beginning in the buying phase and then when you have to keep like going around and around and go bankrupt and build stuff, I get really bored and I want to quit. So... <laughs> Do not pass go, do not keep opting into stuff, do not keep trying to figure out a strategy if you do not have clarity on who you want to serve and how. That is the only question to solve for if you don't know that yet. Who do you want to serve them, who do you want to serve and how do you want to serve them? This could also be called your niche, right? If you do not know that, do not go any further. Secondly, what always comes up when we develop our niche 
or we think about working with them is, but I don't know if anyone would pay me to do that. I don't know if anyone would pay me to do that. This is classic employee mindset, right? We want you to be learning to think like an entrepreneur. So the second thing that you need in order to serve people well, to book your first or next client is the confidence that you can serve them. Confidence that you can serve them, right? This is a learnable skill. This is not an innate trait. I was not the popular kid uh, running around, uh, attracting all the boys and you know having all the innate confidence in school. That was never me. I'm a classic introvert. I want you to, I want you to tell me, are you clear on who you want to serve? Are you clear on how you want to serve them? Do you have clarity there? And do you have the confidence that you can serve them? Where do you struggle there? I can tell you that I struggled with both. I can tell you that all my clients have too. But if you show up for this process I'm about to share with you, you're going to have more clarity and you're going to gain more confidence because here's the thing. You already have what you need inside of you in order to be able to get your first or next client. Okay? My job is to help you bring it out. My job is to help you realize that so that you can take action. Okay, awesome. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do in order to get your first or next client is to nail your niche. Have that clarity on who you want to serve, right? This is the single most important thing to do in order to get your first or next client. I worked with multiple clients on this very thing this week, right? Sometimes it presents as like, well, I haven't done anything that anybody would want me to pay them for, would want to pay to learn. Sometimes it presents as like, um, oh, well, it's so broad that I know I'm passionate about helping anyone and everyone with my thing, right? Whether it's health or helping them navigate through change or helping someone to get a result that feels a little more intangible. Here's something I hear all the time. Oh, well, Christine, like, your business is different because you're teaching people how to build businesses and you've had successful businesses in the past. BS. That's a story. That's a story that ain't helping you get clients, right? Whatever it is that you want to do, you, there are people who want it. And I just had someone email me this week and say, anytime someone asks me what I want to do, I freeze up. I freeze up inside. Um, and I just wind up finding something that I think they would want to hear and that I've done in the past and I give that answer. And she said, well, do you help people figure out what it is that they want to do and who they want to help? And I was like, hundred percent. That's part of my work with a lot of my clients, right? Is helping them nail that, nail their passion, nail their mission, nail who they want to help. And, um, and then we design a business around that. And she said, oh, wow, I didn't think it worked that way at all. I thought it was find a business and align yourself to that. And I said, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. It's such a classic example of how we feel like we have to fit ourselves inside a job description, inside a company, inside a box, inside a role, because guess what? We've been doing that our whole lives as employees. It's supposed to look like this in order to get you know, a good performance review or in order to get my 3% cost of living raise or in order to get the next job, I need to fit in this box with this job description, right? If we take that approach to becoming entrepreneurs, we're not going to like it any more than we liked being employees. And chances are, if you're watching this, you're not cut out to be an employee, right? You know you want the freedom. So I want you to hear me when I say that my approach is always Figure out who you are, your personality, preferences, and passions. Figure out how that informs who you want to serve, and then build a business around that, because that's what's going to make you feel truly free. That's what's going to be a passionate and profitable business for you. That's what's going to replace your income and help you scale to six figures. That's what's going to keep you showing up day after day after day with excitement. But if you are showing up because someone else has prescribed to you what you need to do, that's not the business that you're gonna wind up creating. Has anyone ever tried that before? Let me know in the comments. My very first business, 
um, that got me out of my nine to five was an online marketing agency and I was really good at it. It's my first six figure business. I was really good at it. I love the people that I was helping. I was able to get them awesome results. However, um, I knew that there was another level for me, right? So, so it doesn't mean that you can't take a step now that's going to get you out of your nine to five and learn what you need to learn and get into the business that's going to have you writing a number one best selling book if that's what you want. Um, you know, making multiple six figures in just a few years, working part time, traveling, hanging out with your horses, hanging out with your dogs, like whatever the thing is that you want, having the house that you love and the office that you love. But it all comes back to knowing yourself and knowing your niche before you put these other pieces in place. Hear me when I say most people skip this stuff because they want to go on to the thing that feels tangible. I need a website and then I'll have a business. I need a credential and then I'll have a business. I need a business card and then I'll feel like I have a legitimate business. Guess what? None of those things give you an exact answer to what you do and who you serve and how it aligns with who you are. So nailing your niche requires you to know yourself well enough to know what results you have helped people to get, what results you want to help, or what results you've gotten for yourself, what results you want to help other people to get, and how you're going to serve them to help. Does that make sense? If you have questions about knowing your niche, let me know. Again, if you skip this and move on to the more tangible pieces, chances are good you're going to wind up feeling like you're flailing. If you know and own this, the rest of getting clients and making money becomes clear. Okay? So an example of my niche. My niche is high-achieving, motivated entrepreneurs or entrepreneurial types who are feeling stuck, overwhelmed, or doubting themselves and who want to grow a freedom-based business so they can live a life full of passion. Now, it wasn't that succinct when I first started this thing. It's developed over the years, and I want you to give yourself permission for that too. But here's my question for you. Are you feeling all over the place on who you can help? Or are you feeling crystal clear on who you serve and laser focused on exactly how you serve them? How can you hone in further so that you know exactly who you're excited to work with? If you have some ahas or some questions, Drop them below, because we're moving on to step two. All right. Once you've nailed your niche, now you it's time to talk about your message. It's time to talk about um, what you're going to offer, right? It's time to talk about who you are and how you serve so that when your niche or your ideal clients or whatever you want to call them, your people, read it or hear it. They know it's for them. So often, if you're not making sales, it's because you're not being specific enough in your messaging. Maybe it's because you don't know your niche, right? Maybe it's because you're scared to narrow down. You're scared to leave people out. Maybe it's because you're scared to speak your truth. Maybe it's because you're not actually telling people how you could help them, right? But after you're clear on your niche, the next thing is to begin to develop your messaging so that you can share it out there. So tell me, do you have clarity on your messaging? Do you have clarity on your messaging? Do you have posts that you've created that you are cycling through Facebook groups, that you are putting on Instagram, that you are putting on your personal page, or your business page, or all of the above? Are you creating videos, right? Do you have messaging where you show up, you talk about um, the things that you know, you talk about the things that you know, and teach about the things that you know, and share about the things that you know, and then share how people can take the next step with you if they want to? Do you have a clear message? If you're not getting clients, chances are, there's an opportunity to be clearer here. There's an opportunity to share more here. Um, and I want that for you. I want that for you, okay? Because when you get focused in your messaging, people read, the, the right people read it. Well, the right and wrong people might read it, but the right people read it and they know it's for them, right? 
So, you know, people come to me and say, I want to work with you just because I feel like you get me, right? They're struggling with confidence and know how to get out there and do it. And because I talk about confidence and because I talk about simple strategies and self-belief, they know, they know that they're feeling stuck, right? And they know that they need this combination, that it's not just strategy that's going to make them successful. They know that they need both. They know that they need simple strategy and self-belief. And, and they have reasons that they feel connected to me, right? Anybody who offers a service, when they get clients, clients are working with them because they want to work with that person, right? There are other people out there who are completely different than me who attract a completely different clientele. So the more authentic and genuine you can be in your messaging, the more likely you are to bring in clients who you're actually going to enjoy working with for a day or for six months or two years or whatever, right? If you feel like you have to be someone else and you try to manipulate or massage or whatever your messaging in order to be that person, you're not even going to bring in people you want to work with, right? And so in order to bring the right people in, you have to be willing to bring, to leave the wrong people out. I don't want someone who wants to come to me and talk about funnels or automation. I had someone reach out to me about that last week. She said, oh, I have two kids under three. I'm looking for a one-on-one -on -one coach. And I want to go entirely passive and automation. And it's not my belief that you can do that without putting in a lot of work and building a big audience. I don't believe that is, um, you can do it. Sure, you can build a business around it, but I know the steps that come before it. And so I'm looking at her and going, what you want, what you're telling me that you want is to just get out of the business and not spend any time in it because you're feeling overwhelmed with kids at home. Now that's fine. I know what it feels like to feel overwhelmed with my kids at home, right? I have two and a half year old running around like a crazy person and I am <laughs> expecting again in just a matter of weeks. Like I get what it's like to be tired. I get what it's like to have limited energy, but I also know my business isn't gonna grow if I just totally walk away from it and be like, huh, oh, this is good passive and automation. Hopefully I'll wake up with money in my account tomorrow because I have some funnels going. Like that's BS, right? So I wrote her back and I said, I'm not the person for you. This is not, this is not in belief, right? With my values. I can help you do X, Y, and Z. I recommend you go over here if you're looking for someone to help you with that. And here are the things to watch out for, right? Don't spend all your money on Facebook ads, because that's way too easy to do. And you need to be focused on building your audience, blah, 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 blah. I know that stuff. I just don't think it's a sustainable business model to go from A to Z. So that's an example of how, like, you got to have the messaging where you know what you believe is going to help people the most, and you're willing to take a stand for that. So if someone comes to me and says, I'm totally stuck in self-doubt and fear and procrastination, but all I want to work on is my um, is my Facebook strategy? I'm gonna say, honey, you're gonna stay stuck. We can talk all day long about how to create great messaging, but if you don't have the the belief that it's gonna work, and if you're not working on yourself to show up, it's gonna it's gonna come out in other ways, and you're gonna sabotage your business. So it's always both. And that's why I teach the way that I do so that I bring in the people I want to bring in and work with. So my question to you is how confident and clear are you on your messaging and how well it connects to your niche? Do you feel like you're bringing the right people in? If not, what could you do to further connect with them so that they want to take you up on your offer so that you're building that tribe so that you're building that audience of people who are like, you get me, I love you, right? It doesn't have to be a big audience. In fact, there is a real benefit to having a smaller audience. You can really get to know them better. And in this online space, so much of the ad advertising we're served and the messaging we hear is just like, more numbers, more numbers, more numbers, more numbers. But there is something to really be said for having a small, engaged community. So, Stop beating yourself up for having a small following and further connect with them if you feel they're 
for the right people, right? Messaging is the way to do that. Step three, and I know that some of you are struggling with this, own your confidence. This doesn't mean you have to be cocky. This doesn't mean you have to be boastful. I think, especially as women, we're often taught that the two equate to each other growing up, and so um, we hide out, right? We don't want to be called bossy or even worse, bitchy, right? And so we want to be nice. We're trained to be nice. Um, and kind and to be a people pleaser. And there's nothing wrong with being nice and kind, but if it's at the expense of you being your true and authentic self and it winds up letting people walk all over you and give their opinion and you not get to live your life and defer and cater to them, that's not gonna leave you fulfilled and living a life with passion. So if you're not feeling confident, the chances are good that you're gonna be hiding out, right? You're gonna be feeling stuck, you're gonna be feeling frustrated that your business isn't moving forward faster and wondering what you're doing wrong. Chances are very good that you are going to be feeling like, um, there's something wrong with me, other people have it figured out, and I don't. You're gonna be questioning yourself every day, you're going to be not taking action because so much of your mental energy is taken up and feeling not good enough. So what if, what if you felt good enough? What if you already felt good enough? What would you do if you already felt good enough? Right? Would you reach out to some people personally? Would you do a live more consistently or at all? Would you finally decide on a niche? Would you um, put more messaging out there? What would you do if you felt good enough or you felt more confident? I'd love to know. If you feel brave and want to share, I would absolutely love to know that. If I am ever feeling stuck, I love to set a timer and just start with five minutes of action on something business related. I love to start a timer and just work on one task that's business related somehow for five minutes. If I feel like working after five minutes, I will. If I don't, I don't. And then, then, then that, the next day I do it again. Find that I very quickly stop feeling overwhelmed and start feeling more confident because I started and now I've got positive momentum. Right? Now I've got positive momentum that I can build on. Here's what I'm going to tell you. So many people wait to make a decision until they feel more confident. But taking action is actually what makes them feel confident. Not delaying the decision. So if it feels exciting and scary, good. It should. Those two Emotions come from the exact same place in your brain. And so when you're doing something new, typically you're going to have fear. But when your gut is telling you it's the thing to do, you're also going to feel excitement. A lot of times we say, oh, if I'm feeling any fear, I shouldn't do it. That means it's wrong. False. Fear and excitement come from the same part of the brain. So it's always going to be both. And hear me when I say to own your confidence. Take action. Take action. Do not wait until you feel confident to take action. Or guess what? That day will never, ever come. Same goes for if you're putting out a post with your messaging, if you're reaching out to someone individually, if you're investing in yourself, right? Or you push purchase or whatever. It comes from taking action. It comes from taking action. It does not come from delaying the decision and hoping that you will feel like taking action. Make sense? Give me some hearts if you like that. All right. What is working right now to get your first or next client? If you know your niche, if you've nailed your niche, if you're clear on that, you're clear on how you serve them, you're clear on... Um, you're clear on your messaging, which comes out of knowing your niche, who you're talking to, right? And you're working on your confidence by taking that action. Then what I want you to do is ask yourself, am I being consistent? Am I being consistent? 
as my friend Lacey Seitz says, when I sell more, I sell more, right? Like so often, so often I hear um, clients saying, oh, I haven't sold my thing, whatever. I, no one is taking me up on it. Well, they haven't even told people or they told people like once a month or something what their offer is, right? We have a value in my Facebook group that you need to share. You can promote your stuff, but you need to share offers or you need to share value, share what you know, um, three to four times as much as you make offers. And it's really funny to watch some people come in who like clearly didn't read the rules or clearly didn't even check out the group and they share their promos and they share their spammy stuff. And like, even if it like, that doesn't work. Even if it worked, I would still have this rule. But the thing is like, it doesn't work. People don't buy from people like that. We have a real community, right? Which is one of the ways that I've grown my business. And so um, people can feel if you're just there to sell your thing. But at the same time, if all you ever do is pop in and be like sharing a story or asking some question and you never tell people what you do, they're not going to see that. Maybe they love your posts. Maybe they love your videos. But they're not going to see what you have to offer them. So are you creating consistency both with like how you show up and share and also how you make offers? Three to four times as much value as offers, right? Three to four times as much value as offers. Now, if you're doing a live stream, you're teaching a lot, you can totally make a call to action inside of it, right? You can teach your best stuff and you can also say, if you want to take the next step with me, to help you apply all of this to your business, this is how I can help, right? So my example for you today would be, if you want help to create clarity, uh, confidence, and clients, I have just two spots left for a half day intensive with me to help you do just that before I go out for the summer. Just two spots left. My calendar has been booking out, baby. In fact, I sent an option to a client, a potential client yesterday, and by the time she got back to me, like that with the calendar link, it was already booked. <laughs> so it's booking out because these intensives are so powerful, right? They are changing people's lives. I have one today after this live stream. My client will walk away with a clear offer for her niche with packaging and pricing and all of that put together and a 90-day plan for how to market it in three hours. So if you want my help, you're like, Christine, this is so like, this is so where I am. I've been so in my head about this. I'm ready to feel more confident. I'm ready to feel more clear. And I'm ready to go out and book those clients. And I want your help to do it. Then PM me. Um, and we can set up a time to chat about it. See if it's right for you. Lay out a plan to do it. Because um, there are only two spots left. And I know they're going to go because there are already several people considering, um, considering this over the next few weeks. All right, so that's my example of how to do this, um, of how to make a call to action, right? And just fit it in because, because some of you are going to walk away and be able to go, oh, I know where I am in these steps. I know what I need to do to go get my first client or I know where I've been weak. I haven't been consistent or man, I've been trying to talk to everyone or guess what? I just haven't been showing up at all because I have no idea what to say, right? So the place that I need to focus or the place that I need to get help is my messaging right? Or man, I've got some, all this stuff that I could go back to, but I just haven't been feeling confident, which has led to me hiding out, right? So I want you to have an aha so that, um, I want you to have an aha so that you can, um, immediately go and, um, and take action on this. So, Abra has a question, what recommendations do you have for product-based businesses? I struggle to know how to educate them or provide content that isn't selling. You know what? This is such a great question. Um, and it's one I get a lot. And I'm going to be honest with you. I believe just as much in building a personal um, brand for a product-based business as I do for a service-based one. Because I know that people buy from people, as silly as that sounds, right? So, um or as cheesy as that sounds. With a product-based business, I want to know why, why did you pick the products? 
What do you love about them? What difference have they made for you and your customers? What's, um, what, what does your life look like? Because chances are, if I'm going to buy something um, from someone, I'm going to buy it because I really like that person, right? Or I really like that brand and the way that they present in the world. Not just because I couldn't go find something that looks or acts or whatever the same. If I was only looking for this one, I don't know, belt, right? Or this one product. I want to know more about you. I mean, honestly, the thing, the how to educate them or provide content that isn't selling, same thing applies for a service-based business, right? A lot of times people are like, what content do I talk about other than, um, other than what I have on offer, right? Because that that's the thing that should make people want to buy. But it's not. It's, it's the relationship, right? So I'll give you a great example. I, um, I have um, a lot of friends who are in uh, uh, network marketing. Um, and, um, and one of them, uh, also, I knew her before she joined a skincare company, but she runs a hospital in um, Africa uh, for kids, um, you know, vulnerable, um, very ill uh, orphans, kids without access to medical care. Amazing, amazing, amazing nonprofit. Well, she got introduced to one of these skincare lines, loved it, and was like, hey, I'm going to share about how much I love this skincare, use my medical background, and go, oh, by the way, like, this is going to fund my hospital. So I have so many friends over the years who've sold the same thing. But guess what? Because I knew that she was connecting it to something that I was really passionate about, which is helping vulnerable kids and helping prevent preventable childhood deaths and stuff. Like, that makes me want to buy her thing, right? That makes me want to buy her thing because I'm connected to it. Skincare, I was like, oh, it's probably good, but I don't know if I'm going to spend a couple hundred bucks a month on this stuff. Like, I never bought anything from it before. I was like, oh, yeah, it's on my radar or whatever. But when I was like, oh, that's the bonus for me because I know I have a give back portion where I give 10% of everything that I pay myself to similar charities. So if I can get something that's going to connect to this personal brand I already love and follow that's a nonprofit, benefit them and benefit myself at the same time, that's going to make me buy. Does that make sense? Totally product-based, totally commoditized, totally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people selling the exact same thing around the world. She got me to pay attention because it's something I already like, right? And she connected the dots for me. That's content that, that um, interested me, right? And a lot of my clients come to me going, I want to give back too, right? They know I have a nonprofit or they know that I have that give back model and they want to integrate that into their businesses as well. And because I'm authentic and genuine and share that, doesn't matter if I'm selling a product or a service in that case, it's just who I am and what I'm doing with my business. And that is magnetic to people. Let me know if you have questions about that. Um, the last thing that I want to share with you when you're creating, um, when you, after you've created consistency in order to get that first or next client is that um, you have an exciting offer. You have an exciting offer. I think so often we put pressure on ourselves to have this like perfect offer that has all these bonuses and it feels this way and it's like laid out this way and it feels really magical. And to be honest with you, when I'm working with my clients and we've done the niche work and we've done the work to, for them to know exactly how they want to work with people, we can create their offer in like five minutes flat. It's a few simple questions when you have these other questions answered. And they are simply like, how long do you think it's going to take for someone to get a result with your thing, to get the kind of results you want to help them get? Usually three months is the minimum. How often do you want to talk to them to support them? Is it every week? Is it every other week? What kind of support do you want to offer between calls? We're talking about service-based business here. And what price can you say without throwing up? I swear to you, it is no more complicated than that. 
Usually my clients are like, it's so simple. I'm like, yeah, it is. Doesn't mean it's gonna be easy to go out and sell the first time you do it because it's new, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Because the simpler, the simpler and clearer your offer is, the easier it is for people to buy. What are you gonna help them do? How long is it gonna take? What are the logistics of how you're gonna support them? What are you gonna charge? It's not any more complicated than that. It needs to feel exciting to you to get paid that amount, knowing that it's a temporary amount that you need to get comfortable with so your brain doesn't freak out and so that you can sell it and believe it's worth the value, and then you can raise it. Um, and it needs to be something that, yeah, that you really believe in the value of and that you are um, clear, you believe, as much as it's within your power, you can show up and help them get the result that you're an expert around. And if that word expert freaks you out, or if you're not sure what results you can help people get, it's time to go back to your niche, right? It's time to go back to your niche. Can you see how all of these tie together? Creating an exciting offer is simply a, a vehicle to deliver the help that you wanna provide. And very typically, it is at a price that you've already been comfortable getting paid to do something else. So if you are um, working as a graphic designer and you are getting paid $50,000 a year, that's about $25 an hour if you're working full time. And so if you go, how many hours is it gonna take me to deliver this package times 25, that's a number that you've already been comfortable making. I'm not saying we want you to stay there forever. There's a lot of nuance around this, but your brain goes, okay, we've been allowed to, we've, we've been considered worth that, quote unquote, in the past. Why not charge the same amount to help someone get a result that we're excited to help them get? And then when we build your confidence from taking action and selling this a few times, then we can raise it as your confidence and the value that you provide increases. Does that make sense? Let me know. Give me some hearts, give me some comments, let me know. What kind of offer are you so excited to help people with? Are you the kind of person who loves working with people long-term, one-on-one? Are you the kind of person who wants to help them get a quick win, right? Are you the kind of person who, um, you know, wants to help them lay out a strategic plan and, and knock some stuff out, right? What is your life all out for right now? The reason I'm only offering <laughs> two more clarity, confidence, and, and clients intensives is because I'm going to have a baby <laughs> soon. <laughs> and so I have the space to go, look, you and me for a half day, 90 days worth of results in three hours knock it out it's a quick win right but as much as I might like working long term with people that's not available for my life right now with a due date imminent so you can take factors like that into account but I also personally love offering intensives because of that quick win we can help people get the confidence and the amazingness that they feel when they walk away okay so that is um that is important, creating an exciting offer for you and for your people, which means, yeah, you need to get out there and talk about it, right? You need to get out there and talk about it to people who are your niche, not to your spouse, not to your coworker who isn't doing anything to improve their lives, not to your friends with a crappy mindset, right? Who are just only complaining and talking about how even though they're 30, they're too old to do anything different, right? Do not try to validate this idea with somebody you would not trade places with, okay? Only take advice from someone you would trade places with. Now, when it comes to your niche, they may not have the results that you want, but they might be the kind of person that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to help them, right? So those are the five things that I want you to consider and to... to to go, which of these is where I am right now? And identify before you walk away from this so that you can know exactly what you need to do to go get your first or your next client. So I'm going to review them. The first one is to know your niche. Are you so dang clear on who you serve? 
right? And how you serve them. Number two is to know your message. Are you so clear on how you show up, where you show up, and what you're talking about? Number three is to own your confidence and actively be building it, actively be working that muscle, right? If you're hiding out, that means it's time for you to take some action because action is what builds your confidence, not the other way around, okay? Number four is to create consistency. Are you consistently daily sharing your message and value to your niche right now? If not, where are you gonna commit to doing so? Number five is to create an offer that is exciting to you and to your niche. To you and to your niche. Not just what you think people will want, but something that you're like, I'm so excited to do this. I can picture myself doing it. I'm excited. It would feel amazing to get paid to do it. I'm excited to help people in this way. This works with my personality, passions, and preferences. That's it, my friends. So I don't know which of those do you need to focus on right now. Let me know. And in our last couple of minutes here, do you have any questions for me? Um, Abra says, I think part of the problem is seeing the value of what I offer because it's physical goods. I think they're cool. I love making them, but they're an essential to living. Of course, I enjoy things in my own life that aren't essential, but I have time. So you have a hard time promoting something like that. Yeah, Abra, guess what? That means that's a mindset issue. It's 100% a mindset issue because you're saying, well, my stuff has been essential, so it's not valuable. So I don't, I, I have a hard time um, promoting its value right? I think part of the problem for me is seeing the value of what I offer because it's physical goods, 100%. So it's no different than a service-based business in that way. Do you believe in the value of what you offer? So now you know the problem to solve for. If you like the stuff you make, you think it's cool, just like I love what I offer, I think it's cool, right? If I don't believe deeply that it can improve someone's life, whether it brings them more joy, whether it brings them more excitement, whether it transforms their life in another way, I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to sell it. So there are plenty of things that aren't essential to living, like, you know, food, shelter, water, whatever, that people buy because we're all on this path to like self-actualization, right? And so it's like, who are the people who want this to improve their life, whether bring them more joy, bring them more excitement, bring them more whatever. Some people aren't going to be thinking about this because they are worried about survival, right? But a lot of people aren't worried about survival. Their basic needs are met. They have the essentials. And that means they're seeking more fulfillment. And so I think it's just kind of important for you to know, like, where does my thing fit with that stuff? And, I'm, and to give myself permission that to the right niche, it's totally going to sell. Totally going to sell, right? Yeah, Renee, I'm thinking your issue is need some messaging. Totally. And often, like, depending on how you're feeling about it, right, if you're not feeling confident in the value of your, of your product, then it's confidence too, right? So it's clarity on how you sell, on clarity on who you serve and how, and then the confidence to serve them, right? Confidence to serve them. So you have the secret sauce. You have the formula. Like, it's not any more complicated than that, and it never will be. It's always those two pieces to come back to when you're feeling doubtful. Am I clear on who I serve? Am I clear on how I serve them? And am I confident that I can serve them, right? So really, it's worth spending some time thinking about with this. If you feel like... Um, your niche might be the issue. I have um, a self-study program called Know Your Niche, which you can get on my website. It's 29 bucks, and you can walk through it. Um, and it comes with five steps and five video trainings and a, um, a PDF and a confidence resume template, which is um, one, of the, it's one of my exercises that my clients tell me over and over is like one of the most powerful things they've done. And it's 25 bucks, or 29 bucks. Um, and so that might be a thing for you to look at if you're feeling like niche is your thing. Of course, I'm always going to recommend to check out this book, um, my number one best-selling book, The Income Replacement Formula, which is you can get this way on Kindle or on Audible if you're an Audible listener like me. I recorded it myself. It's super fun. You can get it on Amazon. Um, and the way to get my help with this to knock it out very quickly is, of course, the confidence, clarity, confidence, and clients. Um, half-day intensive. 
But here's the thing. I want you to take away what you most need to hear and ask yourself, how do I want to apply this right now? Do I need help to apply it? Or do I feel clear? And do I feel like I, need, I know what I need to do and I trust myself to be able to get it done by myself? What I want for you more than anything is to take the next steps in your business, whatever that means, that you ask yourself honestly what you need to show up for this because it might be a little bit uncomfortable if you've been stuck for a while. And take those steps because confidence can come, confidence comes from taking action, not from thinking about it, right? So Leah says confidence once ran high, but a sales drop, so confidence, yeah. So the confidence was based on something external, not from you, right? And what I find so often with client, client, the confidence was a response to sales rather than feeling confident first and, and seeing sales as a result. Sort of that idea of like, um, we need to believe it in order to see it, whereas most of us need to see it in order to believe it. But if we get sold on ourselves first and believe it's coming, everything's working out for me, this is all in good timing, this is all happening right for me, I'm taking the right steps, right? Um, then we start to see that, we start to see results based on what we have decided rather than our external inputs, our external inputs to determining how we think and feel and behave and judge about ourselves. Um, Renee says, I need confidence. I keep thinking of completely dropping my business and offering a service. Will your niche program help me decide between product or service? Um, Renee, let me drop the link for you. It's really, it's not just designed to help you create a program. It's designed to help you up your confidence and your niche. Um, your niche specifically meaning like um, who you want to serve and that you can serve them. And honestly, Deciding what you're serving, deciding who you're serving determines how you serve them, not the other way around. So I think that's the question that I would ask yourself is like, do I know who I'm serving? Because if I know who I'm serving, that informs who or what they want. Does that make sense? Like my people are are wanting out of their nine to fives, they're wanting to replace their income, they're wanting to scale to six figures. I know and am completely sold that the quickest way for them to do that is to work with me. Why? Because 75% of them who come to me and jobs quit as a result of our work together. I know, and I knew that before I had that statistic, right? Now that statistic just reinforces it. It's something that I can say because I brought it about. You know, my clients have shown up for themselves in this big way. I know there's a place for this book, but I also know that I was a book junkie before I started getting um, my hand held and doing the deep work and being coach myself. And so I know the difference that having the right coach can make and showing up for yourself and investing in yourself in that big way. And that's where the biggest transformation happens for my type of person right? Now I have friends who sell the heck out of products and know that that serves their clients in the best way, but it starts with who do you want to serve more than what am I going to offer? Now I have to reverse engineer that to, um, to the people. That makes sense. But here's the link. You can check out the Know Your Niche um, self-study program and you can let me know either in the comments or, um, it, or whatever if you have any questions about it. It's really, like I said, designed to help you Decide who you want to serve and um, get the confidence that you can serve them because out of niche comes offer. Niche comes first, not offer. All right, my friends. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for being here today. Um, if you're watching on the replay or you have another question pop up later, please drop it in. I'm going to go get ready for my Clarity, Confidence, and Clients Half Day Intensive happening here in a few minutes. If you want to know how you can schedule your own, one of the two remaining ones before I um, leave for the summer until September, uh, if you want my help, this is the way to get it. Uh, before September, two spots remain, and I'd love to talk to you about whether you, um, whether uh, my working with you is the right fit. Uh, this offer is the right fit for you to help you get clarity, confidence, and out of that clients. So remember that order. Do the internal work first. Do whatever it takes to show up for that internal work. Dan Miller says it's 
of your work. And one of my clients yesterday just said to me, I had no idea that building a business would be so much about the internal work as opposed to the strategy. And I said, I know. We never do. But that's why they say that building a business is the best personal development course you could ever take. If you're here, you're part of this community, you probably like personal development and bettering yourself. Working one-on-one -on -one with a coach is, the right coach is the best way to get the fastest results. And I'd be honored to talk to you about that. I want you to take this. I want you to go. I want you to run with it. I want you to share your results in the Facebook group. I want you to share which number you're working on and how that's going to show up. And I'm excited to hear your wins and to support you along the way. Have a great day.